So we're going to be balancing some really difficult chemical equations in this video. So this first one is a beast, but we can solve it just by knowing the surplus of an element in one molecule and the deficit of an element in another molecule. So in order to make these products, the pyridinium chlorochromate needs 29 fluorine. And this dude, which I don't even know its name, will give two fluorine. And then like normal, you swap the coefficients, but then you have to multiply everything by two because otherwise there would be half a molecule, which is wrong. And then you just have to multiply and divide accordingly. Done. So then this one, we need to use a different approach. We need to treat the oxygen and fluorine as one thing. Since oxygen bonds with two things, we're gonna treat it as two. When finding the balance of each molecule, it's important to note that the oxygen in the trinitrotoluene will count as a negative because it will help oxidize things as well. Now it's time to swap the coefficients. Antimony trifluoride is easy. Nitrogen gas is easy. Hydrogen fluoride is easy because no water is made, so all of the hydrogen will become hydrogen fluoride. So then all of the remaining fluorine goes into carbon tetrafluoride, and all of the remaining carbon becomes carbon dioxide, and now we're done. So now we have a really interesting one. So we have copper one sulfide and perchloric acid. This one's gonna be crazy. The copper one sulfide needs five oxygen and two perchloric acids will give seven. So then we swap the coefficients and multiply the perchloric acid by two. So then we add 14 more perchloric acids because there's seven copper oxide that need to be turned into copper perchlorate. And then we plug in the coefficients that we can easily find just so we don't lose track of anything. And then remember, there's 10 chlorine atoms that are floating around that need two copper one sulfides to react with. And as the finishing touch, we add a four as our coefficient for copper chloride because that's how many copper are left over. So this is a bit of a crazy one. I don't even know why I chose these things. I just thought maybe they would make for an interesting thing. So we find the balance of each molecule and then swap the coefficients around. Sodium hydroxide needs two fluorine and this dude needs to give nine fluorine. And then we multiply both of them by two because otherwise there would be a half of an oxygen molecule. And the rest comes automatically from there. This one's a bit of a funky one, but I think we'll be able to do it. Don't worry. So the iron sulfide needs four and a half oxygen and the oxygen molecule gives two oxygen, obviously. So we switch around those coefficients and multiply them both by two so they're whole numbers. Only two thirds of the iron can be attached to sulfate, but two thirds of four is not a whole number. So we need to multiply it by three. And then it's a walk in the park from there.